Go ahead, Ben. Awesome. Um, so next, now you've, you've analyzed your data. Great. Uh, what should we do with it next? Um, a lot of people will want to export it, as we mentioned, for use in a CSV format so that it can be imported into some sort of, say, abundance uh, calculation. Maybe you have uh, some sort of model that you're feeding this data into in our studio or something like that. Uh, and so we have a very kind of generic uh, CSV format that allows you to get uh, information about that data uh, for submission to the Fathom that database, which we encourage uh, heavily uh, for people to want to do. So we, we offer a easy path for you to mark images and then uh, export those to FathomNet. Uh, for further analysis and external tools. So one of the one of the key points I mentioned uh, it, earlier was interoperable is a big uh, big kind of organizing point for us. We recognize that the portal is not the only analysis tool out there, and we do not want to create a only in this tool type situation. So the goal is for us to be able to facilitate uh, export as well as import from other tools that you may have used or want to use to kind of finish the analysis of your data, right? So we obviously have representatives here from Ambari who make uh, VARs, right? Uh, and we've had a lot of interactions uh, with the developer uh, and have a good relationship with the uh, Beagle developer. So we're very familiar with that tool there. Um, this tool is actually built upon the Tater platform. So that's a plat an annotation platform that uh, C-Vision creates and, and uh, maintains. So the ability to kind of import and move between these platforms is something that is kind of important for this type of stuff. So when you're ready to uh, export things, you can go to essentially the observation panel and then export the data to a CSV. This will essentially give you a couple options to either do it based on a filtered view, export anything. You can select any any of the observations that you want and export just their information, right? Uh, and those those CSV contains references to the actual uh, data themselves. I don't know if I'm going to be able to share my screen properly to show that, uh, but the information contained within within those is quite extensive. Let me see if I can find it. One second. So I'm going to try sharing a different screen real quick. So bear with me. Right. Um, so this is an example of an export where I just exported all, all of the observations within a project. Uh, and so Hassan, uh, your question, right? You can actually see uh, all of these, in fact, were algorithmically created, right? Uh, and so the options that you saw there, they could be human created, uh, human altered, algorithmic created, or algorithmic altered. Uh, and the way that algorithmic altered would work is that, uh, let's say you have uh, some undergrads or you have um, some uh, enthusiasts who have maybe low taxonomic taxonomic knowledge of specific names for your um, for your use case, but can provide boxes and observations really quickly. One of the algorithms that we'll be rolling out in the near future is a classification only model. So you can draw boxes and then ask the algorithm to actually provide proposed labels. So that is, if that was the case, they would be human made but algorithmic altered. Uh, and that's what would show up here, um, essentially. Uh, and then you just have a very large amount of information about the observations themselves, right? So you would get the, the media name that it came from. Uh, you would get the URL so that if you wanted to see that observation directly back within the platform, you could. You get the label, um, the label rank, uh, whether or not it was verified, uh, any notes about it, um, the, the first and last frame, uh, and duration, as well as coordinates for the first box associated with it. Um, and then if there was any sensor data associated with it in time, that would come out here as well. So this this is that automatic, essentially, association of observation data with sensor metadata um, that can be pretty powerful. So instead of having to like export this stuff, do a time-based lookup, do a reference to your CTD file or you know four different other files, 
um, this stuff will automatically be associated as long as it's been uploaded within the platform itself. Okay, can go back to sharing the other. I think I am. One moment. Um, the other thing that you can do, right, is stage these uh, for export. It's not going to be quite as exciting for images, uh, but if you select these media uh, and see that there's a total of 16 observations here, you can continue to select those to be exported. And then you can go to the exporting staging area. Uh, and so what this will do, um, and this is primarily used for the FathomNet database export staging area now, um, but can be used for any type of, um, say, machine learning workflow, uh, where you require not just the region of interest, but the actual frame that that came from for putting into your training model. Uh, you now have this ability to mark both images. Uh, so you saw that some of them were actually PNG files, but some of them were actually frame grabs from a video where an observation was created. And these now all become essentially marked for export. And if you want to then export, say, for FathomNet, right, you can then export them, export all. And what will happen is these frames will become exported. You'll get an email when it finishes doing it because what it's ha what's happening is that these frames will then be exported as PNGs and uploaded to a publicly available bucket, right? So these will become permalinks, uh, which is a requirement for submitting to FathomNet, right? But it also means that they become available for you to just access anytime as part of your ML training pipeline. So a future capability for private only download or export of these would allow you to specify an area to save them either as like a zip file that become temporarily available or to some other other server. But as part of the FathomNet portal and its facilities with FathomNet database, these all become publicly hosted on FathomNet resources and then can be ingested into the FathomNet database um, with the associated CSV, which comes out in the format needed to submit there. Um, but this is a way of getting uh, images and annotations into a format useful for training for their algorithms. And similar to before, you can add any any of these sort of filtered, um, excuse me, the, the filters for gating the export. So you can mark a bunch of stuff for export and then go in and then do a filtered export based on only squid, only fish, only coral, um, you know, to whatever your heart's desire for, for that kind of stuff. Um, and that kind of wraps up the export stuff. There's a lot of, I would say, future capability here that we both um, know that we have on our roadmap related towards algorithm training, as well as looking forward to hearing uh, preferences from people at once they start getting into the platform and trying to do these exports themselves and what some other flavors of this type of export might be. Uh, so with that, I think I'll take any questions that I didn't answer uh, on this front. Uh, and if anyone else from the team wants to put in any missing features that I forgot to talk about, uh, now is a good time. Another question, does the bounding box of an object not change location? If the object moves, does the tool create a new track with new bounding box? Um, so that's what the tracker does in the algorithmic workflow. So when you launch the, um, when you launch one of the detection or detection and classification algorithms, it doesn't just draw you know, 7,000 bounding boxes across all the frames of the video. It also attempts to smartly link them together so that you get observations for each of those. So individually, the first thing it does is it reviews each image in isolation and draws bounding boxes on what it sees in that image. 
And then after the fact, kind of in parallel, it will then link those together to say, yeah, these are in fact the same thing. This is where the bounding box is in this image. This is where it is in this frame. This is where it is in this frame uh, until it you know, either exits the frame or is lost track. So uh, I think the short answer is yes. The more complicated answer is um, it depends on what algorithm you're using. So like the segment anything or the one click one will not do that. You have to go through and select the video to have been processed by the uh, algorithm itself. Um, for FathomNet export, um, uh, after you prepare uh, the file, um, do you still have to upload a CSV directly into FathomNet? Yes, you do. This this will not um, then directly do the upload for you because there's a little bit of kind of submission stuff that you have to do. But what it does is just directly prepare that CSV for you so that you can fill out the form and then prepare this CSV when you do that submission. I will say that future state, I think, will probably start looking at more automated uh, pipelines. Uh, so a lot yes. of- Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, with the caveat that um, your accounts will have to be linked, right? So if you do have the same account in FathomNet as you do in Portal, and so one of the things I didn't show here is that we do do social or you know Google Firebase logins. So if you're FathomNet account uses the same email as the account that is linked in portal, then we can do that associative lookup. But if you do not already have the ability to submit in FathomNet, you can still export and then go through the process of attaining that type of account. Uh, so we, it's more of a recognizing the fact that more people may want to submit to FathomNet than actually have the ability to do so right now and accommodating that facility than it is making it as, as one click as possible to actually do those submissions. But yeah, in the future, um, we will be even smooth lining, uh, smoothing out that process even more. Yeah, I, I wanted to add to that. We are working towards single sign-in for both the database and the portal. Um, that's just a, a future a development task that we have not um, figured out yet. Right. And we have a question about the workflow for very large data runs for the AI um, uh, class of our, I think it's the AI detector. So if you want to run the Megalodon detector on an entire um, cruise, is that possible? If it's uploaded within the, um, excuse me, within the portal or if it's uh, as a hosted linked media, then yes. Uh, assuming you have the right permissions to do so, right? So like, um, that is going to be coming down to, I guess, maybe stuff that Connie will talk about. But, you know, depending upon, quote unquote, your membership level will kind of gate how much or data you can run this on. Right. We uh, we are going to be, I, I think, funding all of that for at least the first six months for people that we add in here. Um, but long term, yeah, there will be different um, restrictions based on that. And that's just a, a nod to the fact that, you know, these GPU resources aren't free. Somebody's got to pay for them someday. We just have one, whether it might be worth covering mark or unmark for export from within the video player context and how to revise a history of observations, or do you think um, that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Let me, um, let me, let me view that, that part. So let me reshare my screen. Um, so if we go in, you can actually go through and um, go back to my favorite crab video. When you see an observation, uh, oops, wrong one. Mm -hmm. Sorry. If and when you've made an observation, right? Uh, so you say it here. One of the things you can see is kind of the details and history associated with it, right? So you can see who created it, whether it was created by an algorithm, any modifications that made get made. So if I if I go through here and say no, this is actually a stony coral, uh, and I save those changes, um, 
you'll, you'll see those modifications. Similar to if you're familiar at all with how it works within FathomNet, the history kind of shows up here. Um, and then you can further, in addition to um, frames that will get auto-marked with observations, you can go through and select a specific frame. Well, if it has an observation, you can just do it right within within the platform. So you can you can just select this from export right within the platform here. So rather than uh, choosing it right from the library view or the observation view, um, you can go through and do this on a video by video, frame by frame basis. So this, this frame has now been marked for uh, export. So if we go to uh, here and then we go to the export staging area, um, we see that this one has already been marked for export. Right. Um, so rather rather than uh, marking them all for export, like we did in the observation gallery previously, uh, we can see ones that are specifically marked within the platform itself. Um, and then you can go through and unmark those as well. Um, so I think that answer is both the marking and the history question, or are there further follow ups to that? Yeah, I think that covered it. Um, question, is it possible to self-host the FathomNet portal? Or if not, is that on the roadmap? Nope. nope and nope. And just to follow up on that, I think one of the things that uh, when we were really creating and envisioning the portal, as Kakani mentioned in her pre uh, opening presentation, um, uh, the, the first and foremost thing that we heard, uh, from our, all of our, um, uh, interviews before we started the portal was about collaboration. And so one of the key or lack of collaboration within the video, um, especially the ocean imagery space. And so one of the things by making this a web-based portal that we're really working to encourage is creating it as a shared space where everyone's data you know, with permissions can learn from everyone's data that we're really harnessing the power of all, all ocean imagery to train and um, be able to, you know, uh, really get machine learning, um, uh, you know, trained to a point where it can almost automatically do this for all ocean species. So I think that's the spirit in which we've made this more of a web-based collaborative tool versus sort of an independent downloadable tool that has different and separate versions of. Um, so uh, that's really the uh, the intention behind that choice. And it's worth you know noting that there are already some really excellent tools that allow you to host um, locally. Uh, while they might not have all the AI bells and whistles, you know, there are definitely options available that can address those needs. 